Hi everyone, welcome to our next week's lecture. We're currently in week seven of our stats lectures for 105. And this week we are continuing our foray into t-tests that we started last week. So t-test part two today. So the things we're going to talk about today are continuing on types of t-tests and specifically talking about the paired samples t-test. Um, some of the content that we go over today will be a recap from last week in that we'll be reiterating or just going over some of the same ideas that we talked about last week. As you'll see, there's a lot of similarities, even though we're talking about three different kinds of t-tests, there's a lot of similarities in terms of the conceptualization of the test and how it's conducted. So hopefully today we'll just reiterate a whole lot of things we talked about last week. And we're also going to be talking about two different concepts that we haven't quite got a chance to talk about thus far in the semester, although I have mentioned them very briefly. The first one of those is confidence intervals, and the second one is effect sizes. And both of these concepts are really important for us to use anytime we're doing statistical testing in conjunction with the interpretation of p-values, the statistical significance of the test. And as I've mentioned before, and I will mention again at the end of today when we get onto these topics, when we're thinking about doing statistical testing or testing for an effect, probably the most important thing for us to think about is what kind of an effect it is that we're investigating or that might exist and how big that effect is, what the size of that effect is. What we do when we're doing significance testing, particularly statistical significance testing, is seeing if there's a statistically significant effect. But even if there's a statistically significant effect, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's an important effect or a valuable effect or a useful effect or a practically necessary effect. So we'll talk a little bit about that today too. Okay, so recapping some of the things we talked about last week, essentially there's three different kinds of t-tests that we have discussed last week and this week. And our kind of overall take home message here is that throughout all of the different kinds of statistical tests that we talk about, they're all designed to address different kinds of research questions and different kinds of study designs. So which particular test we pick depends in part on our particular research question, our particular hypothesis, and how our study was designed. So t-tests specifically are all about looking at a mean score, an average score on some particular numeric variable, a quantitative variable, and seeing if that score differs between groups or investigating the average value of that score. So the first kind of t-test that we talked about last week was the one sample t-test. And that kind of t-test looks to see if the average score on a variable is different to some known population average, some external test average score. The second kind of t-test we talked about last week, which was the independent samples t-test, was seeing if there's a difference in the average score of that numeric variable between two independent or separate groups. So that was the independent samples t-test. And the third one that I mentioned last week, but we actually didn't get to explore until right now, is the paired t-test, and that's seeing if there's a difference in the average score on some numeric variable between two related or non-independent groups. So it's very similar to the previous one. It's very similar to the independent samples t-test. But the difference here is that the two groups that we've got are related groups. And that could be either the same person measured under multiple different measurement occasions, or it could be different people, but people who are non-independent, people who are related. And I'll talk about that in a second. So on to our paired samples t-test. Okay, so as I just said, it's a relatively similar kind of test, certainly conceptually as the, as the independent samples t-test, but what we need to do with the paired samples t-test is to take into account the fact that the observations or the people that we've got the data from are non-independent. The people between the two different groups, they're not separate groups or independent groups, they're in fact related groups. So there's a couple of different ways that, that this could happen in terms of the design of our study. The first and probably the most common, particularly for um, the kind of research that we talk about, is if, is if you're looking at the same person's score on something across two different time points or across two different conditions. So let's say we wanted to test the effect of an intervention. We could measure somebody's, say, anxiety score before the intervention and then after the intervention. And we, get, we then get two scores from the same person 
but it's the same person who's giving those two scores. They're not separate scores. They're not separate people giving those scores. It's the same person under two different time points. We could also have a repeated measures or within subjects experiment where we've got two different conditions that the experiment is manipulating and we get each person, each participant in the study to complete the experiment under both of those two different conditions. So as I said, that's probably the most common kind of use for the paired samples t-test, particularly in psychology, human sciences and health sciences research. But it's also worth talking about some other instances where this kind of manipulation is used. So it could be that we're looking at related people. Let's say we're looking at twins. We're looking at two members of a twin set and we wanted to compare scores between the two different twins. It could also be that we're looking at partners, say married couples or people in a romantic long-term relationship, and we want to see if scores are different between those two people. Any kind of instance where we've got two scores, two sets of, or a, a set of two scores, but those two scores are not independent. They're not from completely independent or sort of randomly selected people or randomly selected conditions. There's a relationship between these two scores. That's when we need to to do something different to what we did to the independent samples t-test last week. And the kind of question that we're asking for the paired samples t-test is if there's a difference between the two scores. So on average, is there some difference between the set of score, set kind of set A of the scores and set B of the scores? So it could be that we're looking to see if there's, say, a decrease in depression from before the therapy at baseline to after the therapy, post-therapy. It could be that we're trying to investigate whether female partners undertake, say, more housework, so they do more housework around the house than male partners. So it's very similar kind of research question to what we were talking about with the independent samples t-test, but the two different groups or the two kind of sets of observations, they're not independent. There's a relationship, either because it's the same person under different conditions or they're separate people, but they're related people. The null hypothesis for our paired samples t-test is that the population average difference score is equal to zero. So remember that mu is the symbol that represents our population mean, the population average. And the little d subscript here is representing the difference score. And the difference is just the difference between score one and score two um, in each of those pair of scores. So if the average difference is equal to zero, that means that there's no difference between the two sets of scores. Our alternate hypothesis is just the opposite of our null hypothesis, and that's saying that the average population difference score is not equal to zero. It's either a positive number or a negative number, but it's something that's not equal to zero. And the key variables that we're talking about for a paired samples t-test is two variables. One of them is our outcome variable, our dependent variable, and that's going to be a numeric variable, like that quantitative variable, something that's measured quantitatively. And we're also going to have a categorical variable, which is going to be our grouping variable, also called our independent variable here, which is going to have two levels or two categories of that variable. We talked quite a bit about assumptions last week and assumptions are just certain conditions that need to be met in order for this particular test that we're wanting to run or going to run to be valid, to be an okay thing to do, to be a reasonable thing to do. And I said to you last week and possibly the week before as well, I do like to repeat myself, that any time we run a statistical test, each test has a set of assumptions that go along with it. And it's really important to make sure that the, the kind of research context that you're, you've got here, that you want to use um, the data to analyze, or you want to analyze the data using this particular kind of test, it's really important that you check the assumptions of the particular statistical test in order to make sure that you're not doing something stupid, that you're not making a mistake or doing something that's not a reasonable thing to do. So assumptions help us know which kind of test is appropriate in what circumstance. So we've got three assumptions for our paired samples t-test. The first one is that our outcome variable, our dependent variable, is on some kind of numeric scale. So it could be an interval scale, it could be a ratio scale, but it's some kind of number. It's a score that's representing some kind of number. Our second assumption is that these different scores are normally distributed. So again, we've talked a little bit about a normal distribution before. A normal distribution is that nice bell-shaped curve. Um, and so the assumption here is not about the outcome variable itself. 
it's not an assumption of the normal distribution of that dependent variable, but instead it's an assumption of normal distribution of the different scores, the difference between score one and score two. And we'll talk about that in a second in more detail. Our third assumption here for our paired samples t-test is that the observations are related across the two different groups, but that they're independent across the pairs. And what I mean by that is if we've got, say, the same person giving us two scores, say pre and post, that there is that relationship for each set of scores that the pre-score is from the same person or the same pair of, of um, scores as the post-score, but that each person is a separate person, is an independent person. So we've got a relationship within the two different time points, but we've got an independence across the people for each of those time points, if that makes sense. And again, I'll talk about that more in detail in a second.